Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. It is the 2020 Olympics, and joining me is the Olympic champion himself, the man who was 144-22 in the 200 free for a new British record, Tom Dean. What's up, man? How's it going? Hi, hi Coleman. I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. the Olympic champion, the tuner free, you guys just completely smashed the 800 free relay. So it's been quite an eventful week for you. Um, can you just start by taking me through your week and how you've managed all these races and kind of, kind of the emotions that have gone along with them? Yeah. Um, like you said, it's been a full on week. You know, I, I was finished within the first half of the racing schedule. So, um, it was tough. It was, uh, 200 free heat following morning, 200 free semi the following morning, 200 free final, then the four by two heat that night and then the four by two final the next morning. So it was just a massive block of racing in a short space of time. And obviously that's a big physical exertion, but it's a big, you know, emotional exertion, like you said as well. It takes a lot out of you, you know, achieving Olympic gold um, takes a bit more out of you than I think I expected. Um, so it was a real shock that, like you said, you've got to be professional about it. You've got to follow a routine. You've got to be able to, bring yourself back down to earth and, and get ready because obviously I had to do a job in the, in the relay the next day. Um, but no, it was, it was a tough schedule. Um, it's been a tough five races um, and I'm glad I was able to, you know, put together some good swims and when I needed to and, and progress the rounds. Obviously you're, you're kind of an up and comer and we'd be remiss to not mention you, your sponsor Speedo. Uh, you are a Speedo athlete. Um, com- coming into these games, how how that how how has speedo been able to help you as a professional um just managing these nerves and honestly managing your expectations i mean did you did you expect to get your hand on the wall first in that 200 freestyle um i think the great thing about speedo and the legacy that it has and, and being part of this this group is there are so many other high level athletes not only currently on the team but that you followed in the footsteps of my training partner, Siobhan, you know, was a fellow speedo athlete and I was able to speak to her about all that and, and she told me all about, um, you know, being part of the suit uh, process and designing new suits and um, uh, all the different kit and, and, and kit updates and all the exciting stuff that comes with being a speedo sponsor. So when you're part of this family of elite athletes and the best in the world, it's like, you know, you feel at home when you're at an Olympic Games or a World Championships or a European Championships, you know, wherever you are in the world, on the, on, on the world stage. If you're a speedo athlete, you're part of, a, of, of an elite group. So um, I was really fortunate to have that kind of support coming into the games. Um, and that was just from the fellow, you know, athletes that are also um, speedo members. On top of that, you always got the, the best kit that you're wearing. You know, you're on the biggest stage in the world. You need the best kit. And, and I've said it before, I think I've done a podcast with you guys actually about the speedo design process and the kit. But when you're wearing it, you don't even need to worry about it. You know it's going to do its job. So you just need to focus on your race and the swim and the kit will do the job in the background. And, and you know, I've never had any doubts. So it's been so great the last few years having that kind of um, level of support. And, you know, people always say the Olympic Games is too big to take on by yourself. You need all these people helping you. And, and that's uh, exactly been the case. Having, having had your trials and then European championships, and, you know, having had these big lead-up meets, um, this being your first games, do you, have, have you felt like, have you felt pretty comfortable just going through this process, knowing what a big stage it is? Yeah. I mean, I'm fortunate in that the, the big occasions don't, you know, tend to phase me too much. I'm quite lucky in that respect. Um, I didn't let the arena get the better of me. You know, I've got a coach who's been to, you know, countless Olympics and he's relaxing the environment, um, as are my training partners. So, yeah, we came here to do a job. I knew I was on the form of my life. You know, I'd had a good Europeans and a crack in trials as well. Coming in ranked number two in the world, it's like I've got a great shot at a medal here, not just individually, but on the relay as well. So that filled me with so much confidence. I just couldn't wait to get stuck in almost. You know, I didn't, didn't want to shy away from this stage. I was just grateful for the opportunity and, and wanted to make the most of it, really. Once you, once you arrive in the village, what do you do to kind of get yourself in a routine, get yourself on Tokyo time and, and get yourself feeling comfortable 
uh, and ready to race. Um, we're fortunate in that we had a holding camp uh, about 40 minutes away from the from the village at Keo University and we're able to adjust and uh, we had access to the Yokohama International Pool. We're able to do our last bits of fine tuning, the taper there, you know, got used to the jet lag, really relaxed environment, having just a great time, having a good laugh and stuff like that and not even switching on to the Olympic Games at that point, you know, just enjoying being on taper, easy sessions, feeling good in the water, you know, starting to get to get excited and then you get into the village, it's like, okay, now it's race time and, and you know, your flatmate, I had Max Litchfield on the 4am doing an amazing job there and you're like, okay, now we're really getting stuck into it. I want, I want my part, I want to get, you know, stuck in and, and be part of the action and stuff like that. And then you get to the environment, the race environment, and it's like any other race day, you know. We've been practising these race preparations for months and months and, and British Army have put on countless competitions to fine tune the, the routine and it's just like any other competition so you get there with that level of, of, of um, prep and people around you in the same boat and it's just like you couldn't be more ready to go at that point. So so take us through this 200 free final you, you're in the ready room you march out behind the blocks um, what, what were you feeling at that time could you feel the, the pressure of an Olympic final, either in a, in a good way or, or in a way that was making you kind of nervous? Um, you know what? I couldn't feel the pressure on the Olympic final, to be completely honest with you, partly because I had my teammate, Duncan, Duncan Scott, two lanes over from me. We'd just been in the cool room having a laugh and a joke, you know. With, it was just like any other competition. I've raced him every single time. We've stepped in the block in the last year, you know. I've, I've raced him and he's been right next to me and we've been pushing each other along, so... It was just like any other competition. I'm so fortunate to have uh, an athlete of that caliber not only do the same event as me, but be from the same country. You know, being my teammate, I'm, I'm sharing a flat with him here in the village and stuff. So I think that just that just made me so relaxed. I was like, I can't wait to get stuck in. I knew I was on good form. Uh, my 145 in the semis was the easiest 145 I've ever done. You know, I told, I said that to my coach when I finished. I was like, I felt like a 400, Dave. I didn't even pick my rate up on that back end. You know, just stayed level the whole time. And I was like, there's so much more in the tank. So I was like, I knew I had to execute my best race plan uh, and, and exactly how I wanted to do it and, and, you know, get that first hundred just how I needed to. But I thought, you know, when I get on that back end, nothing's going to stop me on that last 50. So the stars aligned, the touch went my way, fortunately enough, you know, two 144.2s from two British lads, it's like unheard of. Um, and I'm just glad that the, the hundredths of the second went into my favour. And like you said, two one forty four twos from two Brits. So a, a bit, a bit unheard of. Um, it was kind of like a repeat of you guys' trials. You guys going yeah. one two in in such fantastic form. So heading into the relay, you guys had to be feeling good. Yeah, I mean, I was like just almost counting my lucky stars at that point heading into the relay. We had myself and Duncan, number one and two in the world. James Guy, my training partner who I know for a fact has been doing times and training that no one in the world has been even getting close to. And then Matt Richards, who, um, it was a big, you know, it was a big challenge for him. It was, it was a, he had to prove himself there and, and he did a really mature, um, considered swim. Um, he's also another uh, guy who trains down at Bath. So I know he's been putting a good work in and, and, and putting the graft in. So it was like four guys coming together just at the right time. Everyone, you know, in the best shape of their life and honestly walking into that final there was never a shadow of doubt in my mind that we were going to bring home, bring home the gold. Can you take me through your reaction at when when you when you saw Duncan touch your personal reaction of 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 knowing that you guys won and got gold, um, and then and then your reaction once you saw the rest of your teammates, obviously James Guy getting pretty emotional, but just the reaction once once you see your teammates react also. Yeah, it was amazing. It was honestly, what more do you want? You know, your Olympic champions with your four closest mates, you know, great lads, and, and you get to bring home gold for Team GB. Um, I mean, you saw the emotion in James, in Jimmy's face. It was the same as after the 203. I think someone called him James Cry, actually, um, which was quite <laughs> a funny nickname that, that made me laugh. But yeah, you could just see how much it meant to him. He got a silver in Rio. Uh, he got fourth on the 203 in Rio. You know, he's, he's been chasing that gold for so long. And it's an honour to call him my training partner and one of my closest mates. Um, and it just doesn't really get any better than seeing Duncan bring home the gold in an amazing time. And, you know, all of a sudden you double Olympic champion in the space of 24 hours. So, yeah, kind of words don't quite describe the feeling. Yeah, it's, it, 
from from an American perspective, it's been so fun to see you guys on the men's side, to see Australia, and especially on the women's side, but also on the men's side, to see these teams really, really stepping up. And you have you guys had big expectations coming in. You know, it's like you you were the favorite, and then you lived up to them. And it, it's been really great to see. Can you can you guys? kind of feel that kind of feel your teams getting that momentum of like, okay, this is maybe something that isn't just once, once in a quad, but, but something that's going to carry us a long way moving forward um, as, as a team and as a country. Um, I think if you've checked the track of team GB and and British women in the last four or five years, you've seen them get stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, I think that's a credit to the management team, but I mean, look at the team now, you know, it's not just, that what Pete has done for Great Britain has been amazing. He's changed the the, the sport of swimming. He's changed the the, um, the breaststroke events completely. You know, credit to him. But it's no longer just about Adam Peaty when we look at British swimming and Team GB anymore. You know, it's expected that people are going to make finals, and it's expected that you're going to bring home international medals. When you're part of British swimming, you've got to do that, and and, and that's the whole team lifting everyone up. You know, it's it's an honour to do my part and to do my bit and, and kind of help out in that respect. Um, but yeah, the team's just been getting stronger and stronger. And to be honest, I think the next three years are just going to be like immense. We're going to just keep going from strength to strength. It's it, it, it's going to be a fun three years, I'll tell you that much. Uh, so after having a, a little bit of time to process these two gold medals, um, what what excites you the most about about getting to bring home individual and relay gold uh, for yourself, for your team, for your country? Yeah, I mean, you said it there. It, it is not just for myself, but it's for Team GB. It's for Great Britain. It's for my coach, David Nolte. It's for the entire Bath, uh, Bath sport staff. Um, and it's for my family as well, you know, and everyone back home who's been watching. There's a video of them all, you know, having a watch party and, and, and watch me bring home the gold on that 203 and you can see how much it meant to so many people. So it's, it's a real honour to touch people's lives like that and get people excited about swimming and live sport again. Um, and, you know, it, could, it couldn't be any better. I can't wait to get home and, and celebrate with them all. We have that video. Uh, we are sent <laughs> by Team Speedo. We're actually going to play it now. <laughs> You saw the video. What did, oh. did you have a reaction once you saw that video and just how yeah. much it meant to so many people? I've seen that video countless times. I can't stop watching that video. I, I absolutely love it. I had no idea that was going on. I honestly <laughs> didn't have a single idea, but I watched that and I'm like, this is incredible. This is what it's all about. I mean, the stills from that are, are amazing. All my family, all my friends, all my neighbours, a little half of maiden had turned up. It was so, so exciting to see. And that's what, you know, the Olympics does for people. That's how exciting it is. And, and that's the energy Team GB brings. And these people couldn't be out there with me. And that's what kind of came to mind when I was standing on the podium slightly and, and hit me quite hard. These people couldn't be out uh, there with me, but I could see how much it meant to them back home. Um, yeah, that video is amazing. You know, credit to my family for putting it, putting that big party together. That's I'd, Your family put that together? Yeah, that's literally in my back garden. They got a big projector screen. Pretty sure they invited everyone in their contacts round in their phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just said, look, this is going to be a night to remember. And, and it was. That's, that's, that's fantastic. I, f- I feel like, um, yeah, in the US, we, we are seeing videos from like these watch parties. But I, I had assumed, you know, NBC or, you know, like some, some, someone official put them together to have your, have your parents just be like, listen, come on down. It's, yeah. it's going to be a good one. That's great. <laughs> yeah it's cool so so two gold medals where are you going to keep them where am i going to keep them i'm going to keep them somewhere very safe and very secret and that's where i'm going to keep <laughs> them but yeah they're going to be under lock and key <laughs> i'm i'm imagining like a like a harry potter gringotts bank situation <laughs> don't like that no probably safer actually probably safer oh wow okay <laughs> probably safer so so fair enough i can't argue with that um, I mean, when, what, what does the rest of the meet look like for you? I don't, you're not swimming, are you? You're done. Um, I don't think I'll be swimming. Um, obviously it's still up in the air about relay selection and, and, mm-hmm. you know, the nature of COVID and, and, and the dangers that that poses. You never know when you might get a call up, but, uh, two and a three and the four by two and a three were my two big focuses and, uh, you know, under my belt, done and dusted now. So let's assume you're not swimming. 
uh, how exciting is going to be to watch this mixed medley and, and then the, the medley relays to follow? Oh, I can't wait. Honestly, I cannot wait. And, you know, watching the finals this morning was amazing. Duncan bringing home another medal is just incredible. You know, I can't credit him enough on what he's done for, for Team GB and, you know, true, true inspiration, not just for myself, but for everyone on the team. It was brilliant what he did after so many tough swims back to back. But yeah, that mixed medley relay, I think we're in with a cracking shot on that one and the medley relay, to be honest. I mean, we've been getting stronger and stronger and stronger on that relay. And, you know, if we can have a repeat of Guangzhou 2019, then it's just going to be electric, I think. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how much more there is to say about that medley relay, but I, I have to say I was reading some comments uh, on Swim Swam about, it, it, was, it was on the article of, of Duncan getting silver, breaking the British record, and people were like, mm-hmm. He got another individual silver. Like he's gonna want it on that medley relay. <laughs> like we, like the, our 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 American commenters are worried that he's gonna he's in good form. That's obvious, and he's gonna want it on that medley relay and and throw down another legendary split. Which I'm I'm yeah. guessing you probably don't doubt. No, I don't doubt that. Just look at Duncan and his relay history. He always turns it on on a relay every single time. And I fairly fit. He turned it on in our four by two, 143 split is incredible. Honestly, he's going to be untouchable on that relay. And it wouldn't surprise me if he brings it home like he did in Guangzhou. It's just, yeah, he really brings it up a notch. It's it, it, That's always fun to see. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for your time. It, it's always great talking to you. Any parting thoughts uh, from Tokyo before we sign off today? Uh, I just think keep an eye out on Team GB in the next few days because I think it's going to be it's going to be pretty exciting. Speedo athlete Tom Dean sitting down with him, double Olympic champion in the tuner free four by two hundred free relay. Tom, again, thanks for your time. Thanks, Coleman. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well. All right. So these are what stop the medals from thinking together. <laughs> That's how, how has this not been a patented thing? When, when did you come up with, with the socks? Honestly, it wasn't even me. It was someone from... Team GB, and they're like, look, we've had multiple medalists in the past. And then when I've got to do an interview, it just comes off <laughs> and it goes like that. So wow. that's the way to do it. D- how heavy are those things? Are those, are those pretty Yeah, they've got, they got some real weight to them. I don't know if you can see how thick they are, oh, but they're yeah. really, you know, they're solid bits of kit. Wow. But I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of looking at them, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> are, are these heavier than, than any other metal? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. Socks. That's legit. Oh, that's the way to go. <laughs>